Okay, so uh, to make a circuit diagram, we first need to import um, circuit ticks or whatever it's called. Um, and then to create a diagram, we need to create like a begin block of uh, type circuit ticks. Like this. Um, so right now it's blank. We haven't drawn anything. Uh, in order to draw something, you first use the draw command and then end it with a semicolon. And then in between, you can put a starting coordinate um, with like an ordered pair. And then a double dash means to draw a wire between two points. So we want it to end at 2, 2. And if you say, if you can see that it goes from 0, 0 up to 2, 2. And so that means that positive y is in up the direction. Okay, so in between the two, the two points, you can instead put a resistor or some other circuit component. Um, and then if you want like like circles at either end of the wire, you can do um, like the type of the component, comma, and then you can do O for an open circle dash star star for a closed dot. So you can see like this wire starts with an open circle with the O here and then this thing is annoying. Um, ends with a filled circle down here. And so yeah you can like leave off the O if you don't want anything special on one end. Okay that's cool. And so if you like want a wire to end in a circle but you just don't want any component in between, you can use shorts instead of uh, like here. And then that just draws a plain wire. I think short stands for short circuit. And it's probably like the only uh, two component that you'll be using in circuit text because um, all the logic gates are considered nodes. So um, if you want to like label a point, add a label to a point, you can do, you can create a node and it's a label type, or I guess, I don't know, it, you, like you specify the label, and you can specify like which side you want the text to show on, and you can put a formula as the name, it's so like x0, and then here, these curly brackets, I usually leave them empty, you need to have the curly brackets after node, um, but what these curly brackets are, are like the label to put on top of the uh, point, so I can put high here, and then you can see that high shows up in the middle. So in this case, it's not that useful. But for logic gates later on, you might want to put something inside a logic gate. And that's what this uh, label, th these curly brackets are for. And remember, you have to have these. Otherwise, uh, circuit ticks gets pissed. Um, and also, um, in circuit diagrams, we usually don't have diagonal lines. So instead, you can do bar dash. And that makes a... Um, like a boxy kind of line towards your destination, but then you can't like end it with a circle. So either you use this or you use two shorts if you want to end the wire in a circle. Um, okay, so let's get to some logic gates. So, uh, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna replace this with a I'm going to put a NOT gate down at 0, 0. So it's a NOT gate is another type of node. Um, its name is NOT port. And then, yeah. And you can see that it inserts a pretty fat NOT gate here. So it kind of just places it in a random position. So what you can do is make it so that its um, output wire is connected to 0, 0. So you can do anchor. Oops, anchor equals out, and that will make it so that it's anchored on its uh, output wire. And if you're keen, you might notice that the NOT gate is in the negative coordinates, the negative y coordinate, uh, sorry, the negative x coordinates. And the cool thing about that is that um, uh, oh yeah, uh, circuit ticks like automatically figures out the view box for the thing, which is pretty cool. Does it means that it doesn't like clip off anything if your diagram goes into the negatives, um, and so I think that this not 
so uh, gate is pretty large, so I usually scale it down by half, and then I always put like not in there. It's kind of redundant, but that's what we do in our CSC twenty class. So at uh, two two, I'm gonna add another gate. It's an and gate, so and port. And you can see that it also pl places it somewhere random, so we have to anchor it. Uh, I want to anchor it by the lower input here, so that's called in two. So anchor equals in two, and you can see that it this wire connects to its lower input. Um, so now I want to add something to the end of the AND gates wire. So what I can do is first I need to give uh, I can give nodes IDs. Um, I usually name my nodes like something generic like AND or NOT. But for this video, I'm going to use like human names so you can tell when I'm using a node ID. So I'm going to call this one Billy. Um, and this doesn't do anything yet. But what I can do is then I can jump. I can use uh, Billy's anchors as like coordinates. So I can do Billy.out. And here it will jump to Billy's output wire position. And then from here, um, I can create a short circuit, a short wire that ends in an open circle. And then I can uh, move it, move the position to the right by three units, like this. So the double equals here, no, sorry, the double plus signs here mean uh, to increase, like it's an offset from the current position. So three zero means only move to the right by three, don't change Y. And here you can see that we move to the right three, and then the line ends in an open circle. Th that's pretty cool. And then finally, I can add a label um, to the right of the circle. So right, and then I'll call it C0. And don't forget the curly brackets. Cool. So I'm going to demonstrate a full circuit now. I'm going to make a half adder. So a half adder. Uh, I'm going to start at 0, 0, and I'm going to label the first input um, x0. That's the one of the bits that we're adding in. I mean, I can save and see, you have x0. That's pretty cool. So then I'm going to uh, make a wire that starts with an open circle, and I'm going to make it go to 3, 0. And then here I'm going to add an xor gate. So XOR port, and then I'm going to anchor it by its upper input, which is in 1, like so. And then, oh, and so I want to connect the second input, Y0, to the second, um, the lower input. But unfortunately, in circuit ticks, it seems like the distance between the two inputs is not like some fan nice integer value, so I have to use um, write it in terms of the anchors, I guess. So what I can do is um, first start with so I'm going to go back to uh, the x equals zero. And for the y coordinate, I'm going to do 52 bar dash curly. Oh, I haven't named this yet. So I'm going to name this curly. This XOR gate is going to be named curly. And it's lower. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to do 52 bar dash curly dot in two. So this gibberish means um, that I want to go to x equals zero. And for the y coordinate, I want to use the y coordinate of Carly dot in to like this, the y coordinate of this lower input. I don't really know what the fifty two here and the dash, the bar dash means. I just got it from Stack Overflow and it works. Um, so here I'm going to add another label. I'm going to call it y zero. And here you can see y zero is down here at the same level as the um, XOR, Carly's lower input. So then I'm going to make another. Uh, short like a wire that starts with an open circle and make it go to carly.in2 and you can see there's now a wire connecting these two points and finally for um, carly's output I'm going to jump to carly.out and then make a wire that ends in an open circle 
uh, go right by just one unit. And then I'm going to add a label here on the right side of the point. I'm going to put S0. And you can see, from starting from the output here for Carly, I'm moving one unit to the right, and then I'm adding S0. So that's cool. Now, that's just a sum, but I also need to deal with the carry. So um, down at 3, negative 2. So, um, so this XOR gate uh, is anchored by its upper input to 3, 0 up here. Right? Um, so I'm going to move it two units down, so negative 2. And here I'm going to put an XOR, sorry, an AND gate, so AND port. Anchor also by its upper input in one. I'm going to name this Percy. I'll put and. Okay. So Percy, I want to connect. So I'm going to start from Percy's upper input. And I'm going to draw a line uh, one unit to the left. So I'm going to offset by a negative one on the x core, like the x axis. So yeah, there's a line here now. And I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to use a short instead of just a plain two dashes here because I want to use a fancy dot to show that I'm splitting. You'll see what I mean. Um, dash star. Uh, and then I'm going to bring it up to, to zero. Okay, so you can see that I just drew a wire from here to here and it ends in a dot, like a filled circle. And so this means that the wire splits here. That's pretty cool. And then also I'm going to do something similar for input two. So Percy.in2. I'm going to move it to the left. I'm going to make a wire that goes to the left by two units this time. And then uh, since y0, what's the pause button? Oh, I see. OK. So I pause this. Ah, whatever. OK, so. Yeah, I moved it to right to the two, uh, by two units. And then I will bring it up. I don't know why zero is uh, y coordinates, somewhat ironically. Um, and so I have to use the hack where I use like 52 bar dash. So two short dash star, one. So the x coordinate is one. And then for the y coordinate, I use 52 dar bash, bar dash, call that in two. And use Carly's lower inputs y coordinate. And voila. Now we have these two wires splitting off towards and. And finally, for the output, I'm going to go to percy.out to short dash o. So I'm going to make a wire that ends in another open circle. Plus plus one zero. Node label. And on the right side of the open circle, Put C0 for carry. And ta da! We now have a half adder that takes two bits, x0 and y0, and produces the sum bit, s0, and the carry, C0. Um, and one of the benefits of using LaTeX for generating these circuit diagrams is that your code now looks like some indecipherable runes that you can share to other people, or you can use it to scare other people or yourself in the future. Okay, so usually when I'm doing like CSC20 homework, I'm usually putting the circuit diagrams in a uh, ordered list like this, a numbered list. But you can see how one dot here is like, I don't know, it looks weird. Isn't it like a weird position? So what you can do is specify how to anchor the entire diagram. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to name uh, this node here. The node that's here is the label x0. I name it Sam. So Sam is at zero zero, and I want to anchor this entire diagram at zero. Like, use I don't know. Mark like the anchor of this diagram at zero zero. You see what I mean? So I'm going to use baseline, the baseline option. I'm going to set it to Sam in parentheses. And what this does is that it treats like this entire diagram as a single bit of text at zero zero, and so it positions it like so. And now it looks like it's it looks more reasonably aligned, I guess, to one. The number one. Okay. So another thing that I do for my CSE 20 homework is that I work on it in dark theme. 
So I usually change the page color to, um, to dark green. So here, I changed, I've changed the entire document to dark theme, which looks cool and gamer-like, but the problem is that then all the shapes here are like black on dark, which looks hard to read. So what you can do is change the um, color of the shapes. So in, in slash draw up here, you can add color equals, and then the name, like the name of the color. So red would make these shapes red. And that looks pretty cool. Um, I defined my own cu custom color for the text color, so I'm going to use color equals primary, and now it looks like it's white. Uh, but you might also notice that all these uh, open circles have become full circles. That's because when circuit ticks bec uh, draws open circles, it fills like, in, in order to make them hollow, it adds like a white circle in the middle. Um, that kind of sucks if you're in dark theme but, though. So what we can do is do um, Circ, I think, yeah, circuit, no, it's C ticks. C ticks set open poles fill equals background. Uh, or I guess any other color. So I can use blue. And you can see how there's now blue in these holes. So if you have the background color of your page, which is just called background, then it will look like they're hollow. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I wasn't able to do this video without being enlightened by a video by Share Latex. So yeah, thanks.